Good Friday morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Today we're continuing our series of studies on Acts sermons and conversions. And in today's study, we're going to conclude the portion that deals with uh, Acts chapter 2 and the events on the day of Pentecost. Thank you for joining us. Let's look at our uh, questions for today's study. Number one, what does remaining steadfast in the apostles' teaching accomplish? Number two, what lesson do we learn from early saints sharing their belongings? Number three, what do things like hospitality and Christian togetherness help accomplish? Now, with those questions in our hearts, let's move forward with a reading of the text. We've already read where Peter pled with his audience to obey the gospel, and many obeyed the gospel that day. Let's see what happened uh, following that. In Acts 2 and verse uh, 42, he said, They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as every one had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. What we see here is a clear picture of a very strong uh, early church. Uh, the people being together and following uh, the teachings of the Lord closely and carefully and uh, having a sense of togetherness and, and a love for God where we find them praising God and, and we find their reputation growing. They were growing in favor with the people. And it shouldn't surprise us then that such a vibrant and lively church was also a growing church with people being added regularly. Now, let's break this down a little bit and look at the part that relates to how they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Let's think about that. The word translated doctrine can be simplified to just the idea of teaching. They continued steadfastly in following the things that the apostles taught them to do relating to the work of the church, the functions of the church, their worship, the gospel, their daily lives, whatever area of life that uh, the, the way of Christ embraces, they continued steadfastly in that teaching. Let's compare this to what Paul told Timothy about his work in 1 Timothy 4 and 16. Here Paul said, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Now here, Paul told Timothy to take heed, okay? And he's to take heed to himself and to the doctrine or to the things that he taught. So Timothy was to pay careful attention to what he taught. Look, I know that there are a lot of people who say what we teach doesn't really matter, that people are free to believe what they want to believe. But the word of the Lord teaches that we should give careful notice to what we teach. That's what Paul told Timothy, because that's what the Spirit directed Paul to tell Timothy. Now, what did Paul tell Timothy that this would achieve for him? Well, he didn't say it's useless, it won't matter. Paul told Timothy that in doing this, he would save himself and those that hear him. So apparently, God is going to hold Timothy accountable for what Timothy taught, and then he would hold others accountable for whether or not they followed the true teaching. And so it shouldn't surprise us to learn that the early church continued in the apostles' teaching because in the Christian system as ordained by God, God holds accountable those who are to follow the teaching of Christ, and that's the followers of Christ. In doing that, we will be saved. Now, let's think about the selling of their possessions that we read about in Acts 2 and verse 45. 
It says that they sold their possessions and good and delivered them among all. Now, they were not required to sell off everything. Uh, they were not required to uh, own all things in common as what we see happening here in the early church at Jerusalem. This was a voluntary thing. And that's made clear later on as the apostle Peter spoke with Ananias and Sapphira about this practice. He says, while it remained, talking about their possessions, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Ananias and Sapphira had lied about uh, how much of the proceeds of their sales that they were giving to help needy saints. And they were acting like they were giving all of the price when they kept back part of the price. So their sin was dishonesty and in trying to uh, do their alms deed in a way that would uh, bring attention to themselves. And of course, that was wrong. But in connection with that story, I want us to notice that Peter insisted that it was their own. It was in the property that they had and the, uh, the funds that they received from the sale of that property was in their own control. They were free to keep it. They were free to do with it what they wanted. And this shows us something about giving. True giving must be done from a free and open heart. We give not because we have no choice. We give what is our own and what is in our control. And we surrender control of that when we give. We surrender the control of that to others. This is what the Bible speaks of as giving with a free and cheerful heart. We give voluntarily. And that's what was happening in the early church at Jerusalem. They were voluntarily sharing of their goods in order to help needy Christians, their brothers and sisters in Christ. Notice what he said about this concept in verse John 3 and verse 17. He said, whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? If we're walking in the love of God and we have possessions that are in our own control, to use the language of Acts 5, if we have this world's goods, we should have a heart that freely wants to share rather than closing up our heart and not sharing what we have. We should have a heart that freely wants to share out of a love for God and our fellow man in order to address the needs of our brother or sister in Christ. That's the kind of free and and cheerful giving the Lord wants us to do. Now let's look in Acts 2 verse uh, 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Observe here that they were breaking bread. Now in this particular instance, this is a breaking bread that's not the communion because of something that was happening house to house. It was part of eating their ordinary daily food. And this says they did this together. The early saints got in one another's homes and they shared their food together. That's an opening up of their homes and their hearts to hospitality. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 9, he said, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. This is a great example for Christians today. Sharing meals together, opening our homes to one another, being hospitable and doing so out of love. Romans chapter 12, verse nine and 10. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. So here the scriptures are teaching us the kind of love and mutual kindness and preference and care for one another that should underlie the, the sharing meals together in one another's homes and the being hospitable towards one another. That's the kind of fervent spirit we find in the early church. Now notice uh, the results of all of this in verse 47. Here the Bible says of the early saints that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. 
and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. They had favor with the people. The people who were not a part of the Lord's church, they looked with favor and approval on these early saints because they saw their love and their sharing and their sincerity and their godliness. And what was the result of this? The church was growing. More people were coming to Christ. This shows us in action the principle that Christ taught in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 and 16. Here he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is what was happening at Jerusalem. The people of the city saw the shining light of those early Christians. They saw their good works. And so th th they had favor towards them in what they saw in those Christians. And many people glorified the Father. Many people obeyed the gospel and were added by the Lord to his church. Now, with these things set before our hearts, let's go back and review our questions. What does remaining steadfast in the apostles' teaching accomplish? Well, Paul told Timothy it would help save him and those who heard him. This indicates to us we must pay careful attention to make sure that the things that we teach are consistent with what we read in Scripture. Number two, what lesson do we learn from early saints sharing their belongings? We learn we should be generous of our own free will. There's great beauty in the sight of God in a free will gift of our possessions to help one another. Number three, what do things like hospitality and Christian togetherness help accomplish? Talking about the things that we saw there in the church at Jerusalem. Well, they help the church's reputation in a way that helps the gospel spread. The church's reputation, that's the favor that the people had towards the early church. And then the gospel continued to spread because people were uh, being added daily by the Lord to his church. Thank you so much for listening today to our study. As you think about your life, especially if you're a Christian, does your service to God mirror what we read about here in the example in Acts 2? I hope you're the kind of Christian that we're all the kind of Christians that we read about here in this text. And I hope that as you've begun today in the word of God, that you'll live out today and every day in the word. Thank you and God bless.